Okay, not uh, feeling hard done by by my previous uh, experiments where I'd shown that, uh, look at the graph here, I'd shown that a, an inhibitor at 100 micromolar had, had no effect, no significant effect on the effects of a drug using two-way ANOVA analysis in PRISM. I've repeated the experiment and now I've uh, done a single concentration of our drug at 100 micromolar and then I've in incubated uh, the cells or the tissue with increasing concentrations of inhibitor and here is a graph I've uh, created. This is a line graph using the same column settings as with the previous experiment 2 where we've now got increasing concentrations of inhibitor with our result and two data sets a control, a vehicle data set and an inhibitor data set. Um, if I show you how these data are entered it's very much like um, the experiment 2 we showed earlier we have a set of data uh, columns here are labeled vehicle and inhibitor and we've got increasing concentrations of our inhibitor and obviously our vehicle experiment will be matched with the uh, the correct concentration of vehicle rather than inhibitor uh, a vehicle hopefully not having an effect uh, and in this case the vehicle has no effect you can see that I've got one data point here which the uh, analysis reported at 54 which is completely ridiculous since we know that our experiment can't read that high it must be an error so we've accepted that as a, an extra point and we've clicked on it and chosen to exclude those values from the analysis and the plotting so we've then got our graph our vehicle is in the dark filled circles at the top here and they're consistently responding to our drug at the same concentration uh, consistently which is great uh, our inhibitor you can see is having no effect up to 100 micromolar and then beyond 100 micromolar it looks like the inhibitor is acting and inhibiting uh, whatever it is that we're measuring so it, we need to do an analysis of variance on this another two way ANOVA to compare uh, just to quickly show you which graph I used which format I used to create this graph if I go to the choose a different type of graph I can choose one I chose this one here which is a category graph using symbols and lines so it's in the same grouped section as the bar graph I used to look at the inhibitor previously but this time round I've chosen to do a line graph and this is the kind of graph you need to do the kind of analysis we're just about to do so you press OK so the analysis I need to do on this is a two-way analysis of variance just to see whether inhibitor concentration has a significant effect on the result given that we have vehicle and inhibitor. So I go up to my experiment 3 and I click on Analyze. Two-way ANOVA comes up and I choose to analyze my vehicle and my inhibitor set and I want to see whether the inhibitor is significantly different from the vehicle at each concentration of inhibitor or vehicle. So I press OK. It brings up the same box as before. We use the same settings. They aren't matching. We're going to do a Bonferroni test and the variable that defines the columns is the treatment and the variable that defines the rows is the inhibitor concentration and we leave that as it is and press OK and now we get our um, table showing us the analysis um, it tells us here that both interaction and treatment and inhibitor concentration all have an effect here which is brilliant we would hope that the inhibitor has an effect uh, given that the graph looks like it certainly does have an effect at some point and then we go back to our ANOVA results we scroll down and we have a look which one of these inhibitor concentrations has a significant effect on the result caused uh, compared to the vehicle uh, we're not looking at whether the inhibitor concentration or the inhibitor dose decreases from itself you know is the inhibitor at one point causing more inhibition than the inhibitor at another point that's not the question we're asking the question we're asking is is the inhibitor different from the vehicle and at concentration 0 25 50 75 100 and 125 you can see here there is no significant difference between vehicle and treatment and inhibitor but fortunately for us 150 and 200 we see a single star and then we've got massive four star significance here so that shows that at these two concentrations we have significant inhibition so although I've made all these data up this fits in very nicely with the experiment number two where we show that a hundred micromolar there was no significant decrease and we can show that again here so we're assuming now that 150 and 200 would be a dose that you'd perhaps want to use in a, in a future experiment 
So we need to put in some stars, so it's one star for 150 and four stars for 200. So we go back to our graph again. 150 needs one star, 200 needs four stars. Click on T, put a star in, put a T, put more stars in, and I can drag these stars around. And they'll line up automatically with the center of the data points. So I'm going to line it up automatically with the center of that data point and there we are with that one. So now we can show significant difference from vehicle. Of course when you're writing your figure legend you need to make sure that the reader is perfectly aware that what you're showing is significance from vehicle, not significance from zero or baseline or anything else. So there we are. Um, that's a quick way of doing two-way analysis of variance. Uh, now I want to create this to a f into a figure, these three graphs into a figure to present in my report or my paper. So the next tutorial will show you very briefly how to do that.